so we're finally back to our Franklin. Had this sitting on the sidelines for about a month because I have been waiting for the decals to show up. Uh, they were supposed to send me the decals after I got the ship, and I really shouldn't start painting them until I got the decals because there's some color matching I need to do. But you know what? I've been hanging on this thing for too damn long already, and I want to get it done. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the painting. Uh, the ship, we're painting it as it was seen on the planet, so it's all rusted. Uh, so we're going to do a lot of weathering on this. Uh, it's supposed to be a metallic steel or silver-ish ship. And so it is going to be metallic, but we need to tone it down quite a bit. We don't want a shiny metallic. We want a dull metallic. We've already primed the thing in black, obviously. Uh, and now I was initially going to do all the weathering after doing the metallics, but I decided I'm going to do a mix and match here. And so we're going to start building the colors up slowly and see, you know, what works and what doesn't. Uh, because of that, uh, we're going to start off with rust. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole coat of rust here. I'm just going to do a little bit of color here and there in the recesses. And for our rust color, I'm using Panzer Ace's Shadows Flesh. It's not a perfect rust color, but since this is going to be majority covered by metallics, it'll work. And the goal is hopefully some of this color will show up once we do the, um, the metallics. A lot of this will be covered up, but you know, I just I think it'll be nice if we start with a reddish base. All right, we got our rust color down, so now we need to do the metallic. Starting off with a little bit darker metallic than what I think we need, uh, because uh, I'd rather be able to go after the fact and add a lighter color than go in the recesses at a darker color if we end up going too light. So. We are starting off with some dark aluminum, Leho metal color, and I don't want it too shiny, so we added some regular paint to it. Uh, I initially added the, uh, what we got here, Model Air Light Gold Gray, added it because we had it handy. It was a little too light, so I decided to go darker, and I also added a little bit of German Gray. So we're not going to do a super heavy coat of this. We want some of the red still showing through in the recesses in here and there. You can see I did the red in a kind of a blotchy pattern. So it kind of shows through in a blotchy pattern. And this is very airy. I need to turn on the booth and we'll skip to the next part. Well, that came out pretty damn close. I uh, was expecting it a little darker, but I think I'm pretty much almost hit it right on the head, the color that I was going for. Uh, I still want to add a little bit of highlight. I don't want to overdo this because this is, like I said, this is pretty uh, accurate, I think. So uh, going with silver this time and just adding a little bit of the light gold gray. We'll skip on the German gray. And I'm just going to do a light highlight around some of the edges just so we get a little bit of variation here and there. Not much. This will get darker when we get to uh, the shading process, so... And like, real quick tip here. Um, highlighting like these edges right here, you don't want to go down like this because you'll fill them in. It's really easy to hit them at an angle like this and you'll just catch the edge of all those different tiers. So I'm just going to go and do a little bit of highlighting here and there. And then we'll uh, probably let this dry overnight and then we'll maybe work on some uh, weathering. Now we want to add a little bit of color to our Franklin and had a different few ideas how to do this. Um, I think uh, pigments would have worked a little bit better, but we still have a lot of layers to add. Uh, thought about doing acrylics, but I wanted this a bit subtle for right now because we're not really doing the full rust, the streaks. Uh, we're just, like I said, adding a bit of color in the recesses here and there. Uh, so actually I am using, ironically, rust streaks through the airbrush. Uh, using the airbrush so we get a softer application of it and I got the air pressure way down and so just doing a few light lines in the recesses and I did not coat this with any sort of sealant like I normally would when using this stuff am I in camera this is a little awkward getting in this booth there we go uh, I did not use any gloss coat because I kind of want this color to stay so we will remove some of it in a moment, but 
if I use the gloss, too much of it will come off, and that's not what we want at this stage. So, and this stuff is a little bit tricky to airbrush this softly, mainly because it tends to go chunky after uh, time. So, doing my best to keep it very light. So now we need to remove the wash, and as always, we want to do it pretty much as soon as it's completely dry. Uh, if you wait too long, it's going to be a lot harder to take off. Uh, some areas, if you try to wipe it while it's still wet, it's just going to streak, which will work in some instances, but I don't want to do that here. So like this area, you can see it's still a bit wet. We're going to ignore that. But anyway, uh, just a standard bit little sponge here. This is from Miniature uh, Foam Case. And um, just kind of rubbing the wash off as best I can. Because there was no gloss coat, it's not all going to come off. But you can see this area here that I already did, it's pretty well faded. And it does take a little bit of scrubbing, which is good because it's adding a bit of color to the metal. Uh, if I put the gloss coat down first, it would just be leaving it in the recesses, which we're going to be applying a different rust eventually to take care of that issue. So I just need to do all this as fast as I can. And then I'm going to uh, maybe do a little bit of touch up parts that uh, got a little bit too much rust on. We can uh, lightly, very lightly soak this in some odorless, odorless thinner and use that to take off more of our enamel wash rust. So one thing we have to paint differently on the Franklin here is these red stripes in the back. And um, I do have the decals, they finally showed up in the mail. And oddly, these are not decals. They give you red decals to place on other areas of the ship, but they didn't bother giving you decals here. Again, another very weird decision by Mobius. Uh, because now I have to try to match paint to the red color of the decals, which is a little bit annoying. Um, I already tried once. Um, boy, what did I use? I don't remember. I used red and with some gray mixed in, and then I didn't like it. I tried frosting some metallic over it. Still didn't like it. So I'm trying again here. Uh, starting off with some Parasite Brown. Uh, the trick here is to try to get a faded red. And I'm already not pleased because I should have blotched this on a bit better initially. And now I'm putting coat after coat after coat, which is not the best thing to do. So we're starting off with this orangey color. So then that should hopefully change the red once we put that on. Hopefully we can get it a little bit faded. I think I'm going to have to weather it a bit after the fact at this point, just to get it to look how I want it to look. And I should probably wait till I get the decals on so it would be easier to match the colors. So we're following this up with some Vallejo Flat Red and trying to get it on a little cloudy-ish, a little faded here and there. I don't want a solid red line, so we get some uh, you know, discoloration to it. The other thing about this ship, it's rusted, but it doesn't have any like chips or scratches on it in the movie. And I don't think the red is supposed to be just paint. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't study that closely. But anyway, we want a little bit of fading to it at least. But um, if you wanted to do this like with hairspray and then chip it all off, that would probably be a good idea too. Of course, I don't think of that until after the fact. But that's why you watch these, right? So you learn from my mistakes. We do need to weather our red a little bit. Oh, by the way, um, you also need to put a red stripe on the engine nacelles. And I just did that by hand with a simple brush because trying to mask that off would have been a bit more difficult. But anyway, need to do a little bit of weathering. I did uh, some scratches, just took the end of a pair of tweezers, scratched them up a little bit here and there, not too much. Uh, now I put the same rust effects that I did on the rest of the ship and also added a little dust effects just to gray it up a little bit and again this isn't have this does not have any sort of uh, gloss coat or anything on it 
and just kind of rubbing it in a little bit just so we get a little bit of a different effect to the red. So we want it a little blotchy. And we have to be careful because this paint is a little delicate since I just sprayed it. it hasn't fully cured, but we're we'll keep rubbing that in and it should work out. Before we move on to the decals, doing a little bit more weathering on, well, the rust, and uh, just highlighting some of the uh, rust streaks that we already did. Want to get a little bit more color in there, trying some crusted rust deposits. Um, this is the same enamel wash, but it has pigment in it, so it dries really flat. Um, and it's supposed to give a more powdery look to the rust. Um, I'm not doing a huge amount of it, just a little here and there for some color variation, but you can see there, uh, that's pretty matte. Uh, but the application is the same as any of the enamel washes. Put it on, let it dry, and you know, and then either soften it with some odorless thinner, or in my case, just using a Q-tip, just to blend it in a bit more. So I think we're gonna let this dry overnight. And then we'll go ahead and put a gloss coat over the whole thing and then we'll apply the decals. I am putting on the decals now. We've gloss coated the entire kit, let it dry overnight. And yes, decals at the moment. Uh, you have a little, a very little set of decals. Two sets exactly. Uh, you have the A set and the, well, non-A set. And the reason why you have two is because one is for the faded version of the Franklin and the other one is for the regular if you do a clean version. Uh, the problem is, as I mentioned previously, trying to match the red on here is kind of difficult. And you can even see I put little dots here trying to get the proper color and I thought I had it fairly well matched to this. Other problem I realized, once you pull it off the paper, the color changes quite a bit, uh, putting it on another surface. And so I ended up having to go with the regular ones down here because they were a bit closer matching to what I had. But I'll show you here. Uh, this one's already loose from the paper, so it's already looking a little bit lighter. And I will show you if this decal still wet enough for me to get off. Just want to give you an idea of the color. It is extremely pink once you put it on to the kits. And once it's on the kit, you can see, hopefully, it looks quite a bit differently than it did on the paper. So I tried these, was nowhere near a match to the red here that I already painted, so I had to go with this. And hopefully once uh, we add a little bit more fading to the decals, it looks gonna blend in. So that is what we are doing right now. Little micro set, because we glossed it, not necessary, but I have it, so might as well use it. And just for cheats and giggles, brand new set of tweezers. I actually bought a $13 set of tweezers. Uh, these are Tamiya, and just started using for this project. Pretty nice. The reason why they're so expensive is because it's a higher quality steel. Also, it's very thick. Much better than the tweezers that I was using. You can see here how thin these are. I got the, these because these have a tendency to bend at the end. So, much better quality. $13 worth? Don't know yet, but I guess we'll find out eventually. Bite me, I'm a toaster strudel!